Good morning, Mr. Chair, Supervisors, and the public. Uh, Gary Pace, the Interim Public Health Officer in Lake County. And um, unfortunately, I won't be able to be in person at the meeting today. So Sarah and I are recording our report, and we appreciate Sam for taking time out on Sunday afternoon to do this. Uh, fortunately, you'll also get an update this morning on the school situation by Brock Falkenberg. So Sarah. Great, good morning board. I'm gonna give a brief COVID update as of Sunday afternoon. As of Sunday afternoon, um, we're seeing that testing is down in Lake County slightly. This is the dark black line um, here representing Lake County. The gray line is the state. You can see since the surge, since mid-June, the state's testing rate has continued to increase while well, ours has decreased slightly over the last couple of weeks. Over this same time period, we've seen a slight decrease in the testing positivity as well. Um, it was a high of nearly 18% a few weeks ago, and that's come down to about 12.5% test positivity. Um, after the high um, of about 68 per 100,000 daily case rate in Lake County, which was the, the end of July, early August, we're down to about 41 cases per 100,000 in Lake County. So again, you can see this, the surge that began in mid-June all the way to the high of about 68 about four weeks ago and has been declining fairly steadily since then to 41 per 100,000, which if you look is, is, is significantly higher than where we sat for most of the pandemic, only really the winter surge compares to that 41 per 100,000. In the gray here, the state um, increased to over 30 per 100,000. And for the last week or so, we've seen a plateau statewide. Um, since we last presented this data um, last week at the Board of Supervisors meeting, um, we uh, identified five additional deaths um, that are represented here for a total of 74 COVID deaths among Lake County residents. Um, on Friday, there were 17 COVID hospitalized patients in Lake County. You've seen these graphs before. Um, had us note all time highs in terms of COVID hospitalizations in the county. Um, and then on Friday, there were five uh, COVID ICU patients um, in the county. And here's the epi curve, just a closer look at that daily case rate. Again, from mid June, a low of about 10 cases per week um, to sort of that first week of August, nearly 300. And we, we are seeing a slight decline and we'll continue to watch this really closely. Um, I just wanted to share a few slides on cases by month, looking at vaccine status. Um, so since the first post-vaccination COVID case, and so what this means is that someone is fully vaccinated and two weeks after they are fully vaccinated, they test positive for COVID. That's a, that's a post-vaccination case. And so the first one in Lake County was in February. There was one um, post-vaccination case among a fully vaccinated individual. There was 292 cases among unvaccinated people. And again, if you remember back in February, most people were not vaccinated yet because the, we didn't have the available vaccine at that point. And then you can see as cases decreased into the spring, there was one post-vaccination case in March, two in April, three in May. So nearly all our cases um, have been among um, unvaccinated people. And then in mid-June, um, we saw the increase in cases largely driven by Delta. Um, the vast majority of cases remain in the unvaccinated. This, this summer surge is a surge of people who are unvaccinated. Um, we had 94 cases among uh, fully vaccinated, over 700 among unvaccinated. In August, over 500 cases were unvaccinated. 500 of the cases were unvaccinated. And just to, to show these data a different way, and I think this is really helpful in terms of thinking about risk, um, in the first couple of weeks of August in Lake County, fully vaccinated residents are seven times less likely to be a COVID case than residents who are not fully vaccinated. And these are um, very similar to what the state has been reporting in other communities. So to, to be really clear, it's about 
12 per 100,000 among the fully vaccinated and about 83 per 100,000 over the not fully vaccinated. Um, Want to look at our, our recent cases. Um, so we're looking at the number and percent of COVID cases by month. Um, in August through August 26th, um, I'll focus our attention there. Um, the majority of cases continue to be in this age group 20 to 44. So here it's 39% of cases, yet they make up only 26% of the population. Um, we are pleased to see that the 65 and older population um, is underrepresented in terms of cases, representing 22% of the population and only 13% of the cases during this time. Um, wanted to share the latest data on what's been happy, happening with um, vaccine rollout. Um, so we're here at the top left, we're looking at the rolling seven day average in Lake County in the blue line of um, people receiving their last doses or become fully vaccinated. And you can see a slight increase in the seven day average from sort of mid August um, to the end of August with 64 people per day um, getting their last dose. This is, this is promising news. This is as a result of really in July, the increase in the number of people getting first doses in July. Um, what's concerning is that um, if we look at the bottom right hand corner, this is people getting first doses. So these are unvaccinated people getting their first doses. And we did see this nice increase during July. Um, and in August, we've seen this to start to decrease uh, to most recently 70 people, the seven day rolling average getting their first dose. So a lot of work needs to be done to see this start to increase again. I just uh, wanted to close on this slide, um, really to drive home um, the point around the risk, the different risk profiles that people who are unvaccinated and people who are fully vaccinated have. So um, already shared that over 30,000 people are fully vaccinated in Lake County. This is over half of the eligible population, yet more than one in three eligible residents are unvaccinated. Um, so just under 20,000, they were about nine in 10 of the cases this summer. Uh, two out of three are 12 to 49 years old. Um, Lake County has one of the lower rates among um, adolescents, 12 to 17 years old, compared to other counties in the state. Um, white non-Hispanics are the most likely to be unvaccinated and make up the majority of unvaccinated people. Um, about 6,400 live in zip code 95422, and about 3,700 live in 95453, and another 37 in 95451. Um, so I will close there and hand it back to Dr. Pace. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so what I really want to emphasize today, what I really want to talk about and emphasize is that we're pushing for more vaccines. Um, so the data shows that the surge is settling down, but I'm really afraid that as we move into the fall and winter, we're, we very well may be looking at a significant spread and severe illness amongst the unvaccinated population. So the Delta variant is extremely contagious and it seems to find a way to spread amongst vulnerable people, especially the unvaccinated folks. Um, so we now have over 30,000 people in the county vaccinated, like Sarah said, which is a pretty amazing accomplishment really, but it leaves 40 to 45% or so that are eligible and that aren't vaccinated. And those people are where, when this next surge starts coming in, it's probably gonna get a foothold and really move through. Um, one of the things we're seeing right now is that the Northern counties in California are suffering from a really high case rate and hospitalization rate. Uh, if you look at what's happening in Del Norte County right now, it's pretty overwhelming. And uh, we really think that these northern counties are getting hit so hard because there's lower vaccination rates in the rest of the state. So it leaves a larger percentage of the population that's vulnerable for widespread uh, infection and, and serious infections. The, the people that are vaccinated very much tend to not get uh, serious infections. So if we want to, if we can increase the vaccination rates in our county, we're really much more likely to be able to keep the schools open and keep the hospitals from getting overwhelmed uh, in the late fall and winter, if and when the next surge comes. So I think that's 
we're going to be really focusing on these two, these two aspects of things, the schools, keeping the schools open because it was such a hardship for everybody to have those closed down before. And the schools are very vulnerable for a lot of spread. If they start getting outbreaks, they're going to have to close down. And with so many people together, it's just a, uh, possible that that's going to happen. Um, with Delta now, it's changed some from what we were thinking last spring, that it's uh, probably much more likely to spread. So vaccination and the masking strategies are really what's going to keep the schools open. The other thing is uh, trying to keep the hospitals from getting overwhelmed. So we really want to emphasize getting the most vulnerable people vaccinated. So we've arranged for a mobile van to come in for, from the state for the next two months to help with this vaccination effort. So really September and October are going to be a big push to get vaccinations out as much as possible. Now, the issue is we don't have a, a lot of people aren't lining up to get the vaccines. Uh, the people that have chosen not to get them at this point seem to not be coming in. I think there's a large percentage of folks that just haven't gotten around to it or haven't quite figured out how to make the appointments and all those things. So that's the part of the strategy of getting this van into the area. It's going to be setting up at different sites around the, around the lake one day at one site and then moving at different places. The schedule's on the website or uh, you can call our Mohawk line if you want to find out. Next week is when it's starting and uh, we're really going to be focusing on the fair next week, but after that, it's going to be moving around the lake, a different site each day. Uh, Walk-ins are, are fine, so you don't have to go through the whole complexity of appointments now, or you can get an appointment as well. Um, so like I mentioned, the Lake County Fair, which is really one of everybody's favorites events in the county, is coming this, this weekend. And the vaccine ban will be there. And we're going to be partnering with Tribal Health and uh, to try to help eligible folks get vaccinated. So if you get the shot, uh, the Board of Supervisors and the fair is coordinated to get to where you can get a get free entrance if you get a shot that day. So we really think this is a great opportunity to try to really boost the number of, uh, of people that have been vaccinated, uh, get, get a good leg up on the whole thing here early on. Uh, don't forget, it takes... By the time you get the second shot, which is three to four weeks after the first shot, it's still two more weeks before you have full coverage. So really, it's about six weeks from when you decide to get the shot to when you can be fully protected. So the sooner the better. Um, so given the importance of schools staying open, we particularly want to focus on the school age kids that are eligible and their parents. And as you can see from Sarah's um, uh, data there, that the uh, 12 to 17 year olds are really only about 20% vaccinated. And if you look at other counties, Sonoma and Napa County are up in the 60 plus percent range. So we're way down there and those kids could all be protected and they're gonna be high uh, potential spread uh, sources there. And also the parents. So the parents are often in the 19 to 49 year old age range, which is the other under vaccinated group. It's, uh, you know, we have maybe 50% or something of those folks vaccinated. And uh, if we could really get that higher, it's going to help because a lot of what we're seeing is that the spread comes from the adults down to the kids and, as opposed to the other way around. Um, the, uh, we also want to work on protecting the hospitals. So we want to focus on the, on the older folks uh, 65 and older who aren't vaccinated, which is like a third of that, of that group is not vaccinated yet. Um, the hospitals, nursing homes, and clinics are all following the state mandate for healthcare workers to be fully vaccinated by September 30th. This is a big deal. It came down from the state, um, basically mandating vaccines for the healthcare workers in nursing homes, clinics, and hospitals. And uh, this is a uh, We've seen over and over again that the cases in the nursing homes tended to be brought in by the unvaccinated workers who caught it out in the community and then they came into work and it, it spread that way. So it's, it, you know, it makes good sense to try to protect these most vulnerable folks by making sure that the healthcare workers are vaccinated. And I've had contact with all, all the facilities this week and they're all working really hard to try to get this going. And, you know, with all the controversy and the politics going on, um, it's hard to navigate this with workers because we're really just trying to encourage people to go forward. But by the end of September, with a few exemptions that are granted by the state, if people aren't vaccinated, they're going to have to find another job. And that's going to be a real problem for us because we, we really want, we need everybody in, in the workforce here. Uh, it's always uh, tight anyhow. And now if, 
if quite a few people end up leaving, it's going to be a real problem. So we really just encourage everybody to go ahead and get the shot. And uh, if you have any friends that are potentially open to doing that, I just really encourage people to, to go ahead and do that. We really appreciate the partnership of the hospitals and the nursing homes and the clinics. And we also want this one third or so of the folks that are 65 and over to get vaccinated. And again, the, these are the people that are ending up in the ICU and are dying. So um, the unvaccinated, vulnerable people. And uh, so vaccination is just an obvious step forward. So we're asking the medical community to reach out to their patients and try to encourage them to get to come on in and get it or to come to our sites or or even just let us know we're going to try to get a mobile van going out to uh, vulnerable people that can't make it in in the next week or two once we get this mobile van from the uh, state set up. So we're also going to try to get more community events happening. We just had one this last couple of days ago in Kelseyville that was very successful. 38 people got shots that day. And this was organized really by a community partner. And we just, we really provided the support and some of the coordination, but it was an excellent thing. We really appreciate the, the help and the kind of the proactive thinking, trying to get that out there. And uh, we're going to really be focusing more on messaging. So hopefully you'll see more and more about the importance of getting vaccinated and just that we really need you to do that. And so we can keep the schools open and the hospitals from getting overwhelmed. So, you know, all in all, I think just to say we're trying to increase the vaccination rates in the next couple months. And uh, this is how we're going to really try to prepare for the next surge. We have some time now, I think, you know, who knows what's coming, but just the way this thing has been going, we probably have a couple months here where we really focus on this. We've got the vaccine ban coming in and uh, the schools are open now and we want to keep them open and the hospitals have, looks like they're going to make it through this surge. Okay. And we want to make sure that they can do it the next time. Because if you look around the country, Mississippi, Texas, Florida, those places are getting overwhelmed and it's not good. Um, so we really have to fight this whole thing uh, together. Um, preventative measures like a healthy lifestyle and a good diet are excellent ideas and you know, always encourage people to do that. But unfortunately we're in a pandemic and we need more to be able to really uh, prevent this from getting uh, bad. And this is where vaccines and the mask can come in. The studies in the global experience show that these can really make a difference. And um, I think we just need to go ahead and trust that at this point. There are some treatments for people when they do get sick, uh, monoclonal antibodies, remdesivir, steroids do help. It's pretty clear that they can help in certain cases. And, uh, and for sure, oxygen and mechanical ventilation when it's needed can save lives. But um, ivermectin is something that people are talking about a lot and uh, it's not consistently shown to be very effective when studying the controlled trials. So we would encourage people to stay away from that and stick with the, the stuff that uh, is uh, kind of consistently showing to have a positive effect. So in closing, I just wanna ask everyone to please take the steps needed to keep the community safe, just keep the schools and the businesses open and keep the hospitals available for those who need it. So thank you very much.